Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I'm Daljit Dhaliwal. Most of us know that climate change is shrinking polar ice caps, threatening small islands with extinction and devastating populations with drought. But how many of us have heard of a tsunami from the sky? That is what is threatening one small Himalayan country, Bhutan. We take you there. Some call it the lost Shangri-La. Others, the land of the thunder dragon. For centuries, the tiny Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan has been cloaked in mysteries as dense as the clouds that swirl around its towering peaks. Until the 1970s, the borders of this deeply Buddhist country were closed to outsiders. Today, in the lush valleys carved out of the majestic mountains, live a people whose traditions remain uniquely intact in our globalized world. Even in the urban environment of Bhutan's capital city, Timpu, national costume is a preferred dress for most. And school children learn how to preserve the environment from an early age, starting their days in class gardens rather than classrooms. <laughs> Bhutan stands alone as the only country in the world where the gross national happiness of its people is deemed more important by its leaders than the gross domestic product. But high up in the mountains lurks a danger that could destroy this harmonious people and the lifestyles they have always enjoyed. People like 76-year-old Zongpon Uge. Like most of the Bhutanese population, he has lived off the land for the last 53 years in this fertile valley of the Fo Chu River in northwestern Bhutan. My income is from agriculture only and no other source. Rice, wheat, cabbage and chilies. We feed ourselves and sell the surplus. Now all this is threatened. Beyond Zongpon Uge's house, high up in the Himalayas, the glaciers are melting. Rising world temperatures are the reason. And Bhutan, despite having few cars and no heavy industry which contribute to the greenhouse gases blamed for global warming, is facing a potential calamity. As the glaciers melt, lakes are forming within the glaciers themselves. There are more than 2,600 glacial lakes in Bhutan. And with the increase in the water melting into them, some are in imminent danger of bursting. One that could burst as early as 2010, experts predict, is Thothomi Lake. This satellite image from 2002 shows Thothomi Lake capped with a surface of ice, rocks and mud. But beneath the surface, the volume of water is increasing. The rising lake is clearly visible in this video from summer 2009. Through holes in the ice cap and in places where the ice has completely melted away. The lake is held in place by a narrow barrier of ice and moraine at the glacier's tip. But the rising lake and thinning of the ice wall itself are placing the barrier under ever-increasing pressure. Should it burst, a wall of water would surge into the valley communities below, sweeping away everything and everyone in its course. I think uh, people will term it as the tsunami from the sky. and. Uh... Daochu Dukpa, an engineer at the Bhutanese Ministry of Geology and Mines, has been studying Thothomi Glacier for years. 
And then if this whole glacier melts, which will in due course of time, that could create the worst case scenario. It's not a scenario Zongpon Uge likes to think about. If a glacial lake outburst flood happens, his house on the flat banks of the Fochu River where he lives with the 34 members of his family will be directly in its path. When I built this house two years ago, no experts from outside had ever visited this area and so I was not aware of the dangers of flooding. Now I know the danger and I really regret building it here. Further down the river, 50-year-old Karma lives with her aged mother and one daughter, just meters from the river's edge. She was born on this land but lives in constant fear of a sudden flood. When it comes to myself, I may be able to run away, but we worry for our elderly relatives who may not be in a position to escape immediately. When they talk about the likely chance of a lake bursting, I am terrified. Understandably, she lived through an earlier flash flood in 1994, which destroyed her cornfields and swept away part of her garden. When the flood came, I had corn growing here, and this was the level of the water here. That night, I was very afraid to tie my cows in case the waters rise and drown them. We did not sleep the whole night. We just kept watching the level of the river. Twenty-eight people lost their lives in that flood in 1994 when an adjoining lake burst and many more their homes and livelihoods. If the lake at Thorthormi Glacier bursts, the wall of water could be three times higher than in the previous flood. So in August 2009, the Bhutanese government, supported by international organizations, launched an innovative, ambitious project to take pressure off the moraine barrier and to reduce the water level in the Thorthormi Lake. It seems we are the first country in the, in the entire world to implement uh, uh, the project on climate change adaptation uh, program. Engineer Daochu Dukpa is also the manager of the Thorthormi Lake project, staffed by more than 300 local men and women. For nine days, they trekked up to the 5,000 meter Hyde Lake, using horses and yaks to transport literally tons of food and primitive digging equipment. They spent three months there last summer, and will return for two more summers. Even in this, the warmest of seasons, conditions are severe. They work up to their knees in icy water, and many with nothing but their bare hands. Their goal is to lower the lake level by five meters to protect the people below. They carve out a drainage channel to release water gradually from the lake. Basically they are pulling the bigger boulders, they are dragging with the, the help of rope. They're using crowbars, uh, hammers to break those larger boulders, and then those pickaxes to dig the materials out. They have lowered this level by 47 centimeters. Although the water levels are in the process of being lowered, it is a gamble, both against the elements and time. The risk of flash flood for the people in the valley below is still looming. The barrier containing the lake could burst at any time, and possible earthquakes or avalanches could also dislodge the barrier and release the tsunami. So everybody downstream has to be prepared. We hope for the best and uh, prepare for the worst. 
Dashu Zongdag is the governor of the Punaka district in the valley of the Fochu River. He explains a rudimentary early warning system already in place to allow people to save themselves if the lake bursts. We have appointed focal persons in every villages, every settlement, beginning from the source till down the line. And we have supplied them with telecommunication facilities and mobiles. So Concho, this village's shopkeeper and focal person, never lets his mobile out of his sight. If he gets the call that a tsunami is underway, it will be his duty to warn all his neighbors scattered over the entire valley to literally run for their lives. With only an estimated six hours between the lake bursting and this valley being underwater, there is no room for human error. So a high-tech automated early warning system that can detect dangerous rises in lake levels and sound the alarm is now planned. The plan is to install sensors uh, at the source here as well as a little bit further downstream. That would give enough lead time for the settlements or the, for the people to evacuate. While the imminent threat from water clearly exists, there is an even greater fear for the long term. What would happen if all the glaciers ultimately melt, as some experts predict? How will Bhutan survive without its water? Bhutan's water, or its white gold as it's called, not only supports life and agriculture, it is also the backbone of its economy. Hydroelectricity export is the single most important source of revenue for the country. As we are entering the 21st century, hydropower seems to be the diving engine of our economy. Climate change forces are posing tremendous threat to the livelihood and also the infrastructure downstream. And the threat is not just to the people and economy of Bhutan. The changes in the climate which are melting Bhutan's glaciers are also threatening the entire Himalayan watershed. The consequences are potentially catastrophic. Across southern Asia and China, an estimated 750 million people could experience floods in the short term as glaciers melt and drought in the long term as rainfall patterns change across the Himalayan region. Back in Bhutan, the waters and the river by Zongkwon Uge's fields give no sense of the menace threatening from the mountains. Whilst the work high above to prevent a disaster continues, below the rice harvest is brought in as it always is. But Zongkwon Uge can't help wondering for how long this peaceful life will remain untouched. As they do every year, he and his wife walk to the nearby town of Punaka for the annual Setchu ceremony and a blessing from the head lama. Once a Buddhist monk, Zongpon Uge believes fate will take its course. As the old Bhutanese saying goes, a real enemy is fire or water. Nobody can defeat them. It is our fate and we have to live with it. 